What is going on guys? Welcome to another Iron Man episode. Now, listen to this. I got my Essence of Finality very recently and uh, I have the Gothic's staff in this, which I actually showcased in my last video how OP it is on the target dummy hitting like 9Ks consistently for 25 adrenaline. I want to try this at Telos badly, like really badly. In the yellow beam where you get like insane amount of adrenaline, imagine me sunshining, just spamming claws of gothics for like 10k, 10k. That's going to be so nice to try out. Actually not sure why I haven't done this before. I am a WoW player, so having keybinds is not really something that I'm unfamiliar with. And I just set up a second bar here. Let's uh, maybe remove these ascension shards from that uh, bar but uh, i think it's very nice to have another bar here because uh, there are so many abilities that just doesn't fit on one bar so having an extra bar having more abilities and the defensive abilities here is going to definitely make it easier with the key bindings let's have a look at this i'm just going to spam the essence of finality 5k i should have probably used the uh, sunshine before and i don't think on the red one it's the best thing to do but uh, I just wanted to try the damage. It's pretty insane with the red beam. I if you have the sunshine and the red beam, you can probably spam like the max hits all the time with this necklace. It's pretty insane. Only 18% on rage, so I'm not really thinking I'm going to get something here. So we get some battle staves. 97, that's pretty good money. Stone spirits on the next kill. That is like the worst drop you can possibly get. I think I should be able to get some max hit in here. 12k crits maybe if I sunshine on the red beam as well as maybe getting my mage player on and let's see if i can actually make a 12k hit here see it staff of gothics 10k and that was not a crit so i think 10k is the highest you can do a non-crit but if it's a crit then you can do 12k so let's see if i can get in the beam again and do it now with the sunshine 8.8k unfortunate but still very good hits almost done with the red phase Activated a maniacal aura, so I'm doing a lot more damage now. Almost up to 1 mil and almost at that 50%. Can we get 50% now? Ooh, just barely. I know it's only 50% on rage, but I've never went through kills this fast before. The extra 3% accuracy from the essence of finality or the reaper necklace effect in this, as well as reducing the defense and everything with gothic staff effect, it is so fast. I basically never ever splash, which makes the red face, for example, take literally like... 15 seconds. Slightly better chance now to get some loot over 50% and more herbs. 118 toad flags, not bad. Repairing the essence of finality is actually pretty difficult. I have to get another alchemical hydrix, which is uh, of course very hard. So I will only use this necklace for things such as Telos and maybe sometimes Araxor, but I don't think I need it that much on Araxor. But 74% uh, in rage, I think, for even more herbs. I'm getting so many herbs. Chance to get over 100% on rage here and some nice alky balls. How much is that? Like a million alks, I guess. Let's see if I get 14 and rage would be nice. Oh, 13, really? 9 kill streak, 99% and rage, and we get energies. That's very good for the invention charge. How much? Oh, that's only 2k, but uh, let's see how much over 100% we're going to get. Not that much. I just stood in the yellow and basically just spammed Claws of Gothics. 752. That is quite an improvement from my last personal best. I think my last personal best was like 9 minutes. So shaving off a whole minute on that 100% on rage thanks to the essence of finality. Very nice value and we get even more Alex. How much is that? 92. I'm not sure how much these are actually worth, but that's probably like 1.5 mil or something. My highest ever in rage is 138% and I am not even struggling with 120%. You can see here I still have all this food in my yak. I have all this in my bag and the last phase I'm not even getting the one shot. I'm just killing it before it. So it's looking good for a new personal best and dragon dart tips. 1.1k that's a lot almost at my record 132 percent on rage still haven't died some dragon hides 300 now almost at 10 million total loot and i haven't died yet that's pretty nice okay so this is going to be a record kill if i do kill it so that is a record kill but it was very close you can see i signed and as well as i don't have that much food left and i almost got two one shots in that phase but i had a pretty rough last phase Let's see what we get. 13 kill streak. We get uh, Wine of Saradomen, I think that is. 32. How much they are, are they worth? That's like 5 mil for just 32 of them. That's insane. I have to actually look that up. How much are they worth? Wine of Saradomen. 
Wine of Saradomen. They are 140k each. Interesting. Actually a bit too scared to try my highest enrage without a sign of death. So I'm just going to AFK some fishing. Get some more food because I'm actually running kind of uh, low on sailfish. As you can see I also have 3.6k marks of war. So I don't really feel like buying refreshers. So in 18 minutes the quest City of Sentisten is coming out. And in one hour roughly... I'm going away for the entire day to apartment shop or I'm going to look at an apartment in another city that uh, we hopefully will get. It would be very nice and we can move in in like two months. So unfortunately I will not be able to do the quest on release. I will try to uh, or I get 45 minutes roughly maybe 30 minutes to check some stuff out. But for you guys the next clip will be me doing that quest most likely. What has happened with this area? It is so dark. Uh, so let's go to the quest log here. So the battle of the monolith is not completed yet. I assume I have to talk to this guy. And yeah, something happens now. A fight starts or a cinematic starts. And after this, it is said that I have to go to the heart and talk to Ariane to start the new quest. Let's see if uh, there's just some dialogue now and I think this is going to be the end of the quest because I've done pretty much the entire quest. And we get the Shard of Erebus, which is the uh, bonus thing that they were talking about that's going to be very good for Elder God Wars. A Shard of something like Crystal from Erebus, it's almost too cold to touch. Okay, so I can wield it. Okay, so this is going to probably, if I'm going to guess, if it's in line with the other awards from the God Wars 2 and stuff like that, it's, when I have this equipped, probably things are going to be unaggressive to me in the Elder God Wars. If not that, maybe it has a small damage buff or something like that in the Elder God Wars. And that also is the quest completed. No other awards than the Shard of Erebus. So now we are going to start the City of Sentisten quest. Which should be right here, but I can't see it. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I have all the requirements as you can see. And I guess required items, a dragon stone and a way to heal yourself and combat gear. That seems pretty easy. Difficulty master long. And the rewards are 3 quest points, 50,000 archaeology, 50,000 slayer, 50k magic, 50k xp combat lamp. Unlock 4 new ancient magic spells plus the knowledge to restore the pontifex shadow ring. These magic spells or the ancient magic spells are said to be very strong, like very, very, very strong. And that's why I wanted to actually uh, get the Essence of Finality magic uh, ability, because I was expecting after this quest to be using magic a lot more than before. So this is the new area, the city of Sentisten, and it is a very easy quest to just follow along in the guide here. I mean, this has been vastly improved since the older quests. You can really do quests without a guide if you do the newer ones. You can just read what it says here and it's very clearly explained. So I guess I talk to Asandra now. Characters obviously are very easy to understand where to talk to as well. You have the icons beside their names, you know they're quest related. And now I guess I have to excavate. So in the city of Sentisten you have to collect four wards and I think this is actually going to be the last one. And you have to run back all the way to the headquarters and you take damage that goes up rapidly. You see here I have one stack, two stacks and I take double the damage I think every single time. This is going to be a 600, yeah next time it's 1.2k. And normally these uh, globes like right here they actually protect you from the damage but uh, when you're carrying one of these wards that doesn't work so you have to actually rush really fast because as you can see even if i'm like eating a lot now I, next hit is almost a one shot and i have to get all the way here so i can just imagine this oh my god sign of death is a good thing to have here but um, yeah i think this might actually be close to the end of the quest so I'm going to hand this in and see what happens because, well, you can see here you have to hand in all the four wards. They spawn a different god every time. Now Armadil is here. That should be the last one. And for a master quest, if this is the end or close to the end, it's pretty short. But uh, according to the wiki, it, it seems to be like pretty much this. That is the, uh, the quest. So yeah, that was the entire quest. Three quest points, 50,000 archaeology, 50k slayer, 50k magic. 50k combat lamp that I'm probably going to use on like constitution or something. And then the unlock 4 new ancient magic spells. 
which uh, I'm so interested in. I, I wonder if I already just have them. Oh, I do. So, let's have a look at these. I think it's... Uh, I can see three of them. Oh, here's the fourth one. Smoke Cloud. Disorient the target with a veil of smoke, leaving them vulnerable. Increase the target's damage received from critical strikes by 15%. I wonder if that actually means the crit cap can go up by 15%, or if it's still capped at uh, 12,000. The damage cap against the target when landing a critical strike is increased by, oh, 12%. Okay, I should have kept reading. So that's pretty interesting for two minutes. So this is a two minute debuff that you can leave on the target. That seems very good at Telos. Putting this in the red phase and then just sunshining and uh, standing in the red beam. Spamming like what? 14k? 13k crits? Seems insane. And then anime dead. Replace life with death to create a shield from the fallen. For each piece of magic, tank equipment worn. Gain 10% of its armor value as flat damage reduction. Gain 33% of your defense level as flat damage reduction. 12 minute duration. I wonder if these stack. If these stack, that's insane. They probably don't though, because if I would use this and I would use something else, maybe they do actually stack. I would have to try that actually. They cost a lot of runes to cast, but 12 minute duration, that's a whole Telos kill. That I have more uh, damage reduction. That's kind of crazy. Last two, an extremely powerful fire spell on ability cast, gain a stack of blood tithe, max 12 for 20 seconds. Each stack of blood tithe increases basic damage abilities by 1%, seems very strong. At 12 stacks, your rack ability transform into rack and ruin. I'll have to look at what that is going to be, not a very expensive spell. And then insight fear being the last one, an extremely powerful water spell, so this is like the water and fire versions of each other I guess. On ability cast, gain a stack of Glacial Embrace, max 5 for 20 seconds. Each stack of Glacial Embrace reduces the adrenaline cost of Tsunami by 12%. Could be... Um, it's probably not that good, because uh, I'm thinking of like Telos, where you would use it on the adds in the last phase, but then you're in the, the yellow beam anyway, so you have unlimited adrenaline, so it doesn't really matter that much. At 5 stacks, your abilities cast trigger Frost Surge. 12 second cooldown. Frost Surge deals 10 to 50% ability damage to the primary target and up to 8 adjacent enemies. Okay, so I guess the Insight Fear is like an AoE ability. So when you wanna AoE for Slayer or something, this could be pretty good. And maybe the Exsanguinate is more single target uh, based. So I'm not the best PVMer in the game at all, but uh, just by looking at these abilities and trying them out a bit, they are very very strong. And uh, I can use this smoke cloud on this enemy and it is up for two minutes, I don't have to care about it too much. And this is just of course if you hit very hard. The damage cap is increased and the critical damage received is also increased. And uh, here you can see that anime dead I have up right now. It is a defensive aura basically that is up for 12 minutes. So basically a whole kill. But it is a bit different, because it says for each piece of magic tank equipment worn, gain 10% of its armor value as flat damage reduction. So that is completely irrelevant for power armor. It's not going to count at all, but it is going to count for pieces that are, for example, the Acto gear from raids, that is tank equipment, or for example, let's say, the Sea Singer gear from player-owned ports, that is counted as tank armor, and that will increase your damage reduction even more if you have this on. And there is also the uh, gain 33% of your defense level as flat damage reduction. I'm not sure if that is just straight up. Straight up at all gear you use for everything you just get 33% of your defense level as flat damage reduction. That would mean like 33 flat damage reduction. I was looking here and it says like tank armor 0%. And defense level 9.9% so when this falls off I will have to see if there is a difference with this or not in case it isn't then basically this is only for people that have tank armor and that's it now for the t last two abilities this is actually like abilities that you cast and it's not debuffs you place on or like uh, a buff or anything it's casts like blood barrage that you would you know auto cast like this these are not able to be used at the same time. You can see here I put this on autocast, I put this on autocast, and for single target Exsanguinate is the best, and for AoE Insight Fear is the best. 
This is just AoE things, it gives you basically an AoE ability passively kind of. At 5 stacks your ability cast trigger Frost Surge, and Frost Surge deals AoE damage. And the Exsanguinate is, as you can see, it says an extremely powerful fire spell compared to a very powerful area fire spell. So I think these just have a base hit that is higher than these ones, which is very interesting. It's going to give you more DPS probably in general, as well as giving you that 1% uh, more basic damage. And at 12 stacks you get a very strong brack. So Exsanguinate is going to be very interesting to try at Telos just for the raw damage output. So uh, yeah, seems very very strong and magic game might actually become meta after this. So to show you guys how the anime dead thing works, if I have the spell active and I put on a power armor, nothing basically happens. It just says 10 minutes still and the stats all look the same. Now if I put on an RM's hood, if I wait just a few seconds it's going to be affected by it and there's going to be small numbers below the 9 minutes that is going to say how much bonus armor it is giving me because I have a tank helm on. 62, so it takes a while, it's a bit delayed. So if I would have full tank armor, so I, what I'm understanding is that because I have animate dead on, it says 62 under here, so this helmet gets 62 more armor, which is insane because look at it, it has 297 armor, if it, and, and now it has 62 more. So instead of 297, it has like 200 or 360, something like that, which is really substantial. If you would have full Acto and you would activate this, you would probably get like 700, 800 more armor, which is like two chess pieces extra of the uh, Anima Core Body of Saren. So it is definitely going to help out with tanking, as well as you take flat damage reduction as well on top of that. Gain 33% of your defense level as flat damage reduction. You're going to be able to be very tanky with magic and like a divine spirit shield. Now if we just look here, the base damage of Exsanguinate is 2013. If I change to Blood Barrage, it is the same. So the damage of the spell is actually not higher, even if it says an extremely powerful compared to a very powerful. But the of difference of course is that each stack of Blood Tithe increases your basic ability damage by 1%. So it will stack all the way up to 12%. And then when you have your stacks, you can use that really strong rack and it will reset, of course, the uh, the damage bonus. But overall, all your abilities, like now I have 6% more damage with these abilities, 7%, 8% more, 9%, it's super good DPS increase. And then when it gets up to 12, I get to use the really strong rack for 5.1 thousand damage and then you go down and you start building up the damage increase again. Actually going to end the video here, I just wanted to cover the new quest and all the new abilities. I don't want to drag out the video all too long when I've talked about this for quite some time now. Hope you guys did enjoy it, found it interesting, and I am definitely going to try out magic in my next video. So look out for that, subscribe if you want to see when I post that video, like the video if you liked it, all that good stuff. Also, I do have a Discord as, as always, to link to that is at the top of the description if I can speak. And um, yeah, if you want to see a new video right away, videos are on the screen right now. Have a good one guys, take care, and I'm so hyped to try this magic.